blips and dings interrupt our day, and even if you have solid attention, your body can reward you with a dash of eye strain. Today I want to chat about the successful changes I've made to manage my tech throughout the day and then what I do when my willpower goes out the window and I binge 50 TikToks in a row after playing a few hours of VR. Yeah, sorry, eyes. Can't, can't look at my eyes. <laughs> and depending on your use, this may sound basic or really extreme, but I disable all notifications on my phone apart from texts, calls, Facebook Messenger and Calendar. Those are the only things that will ping and make a noise on my phone to grab my attention. And this is taking the first step to decide what can inject itself into your day. Now I do have silent notifications. I have Instagram threads and Outlook or my email. That's my primary and business mailbox. So if the emails only important stuff comes through newsletters and junk, don't even get a notification. And I unsubscribe anytime I get a newsletter that I don't find valuable because your clutter will build up. As for Instagram threads, this is a version of Instagram without a feed or a discover page. It's purely inboxes and stories from between you and your friends that you've already approved. And if you set up your close friends in Instagram, their stories appear front and center opposed to everybody else. So that way the algorithm isn't deciding what big influencer you see. You can actually see some friends or people that you're more interested in first every day. Really cool. My smartwatch is very similar. I only allow calls and text messages to come through on this display. Everything else doesn't get to vibrate and interrupts me. This is useful for I put my phone away from my desk or it's on silent and then I need two-factor authentication on my workstation. I can then still get it on my wrist or if someone's calling, I can see who it is, disable it or actually answer the call. Disable, hang up the call, reject. Reject. All right, so congrats. You've taken the first step, you've turned off notifications, you've got control of interjections into your day. What do you do when you find yourself endlessly scrolling Facebook or Reddit just for like hours on end uh, and you realize that you probably need something to stop you doing so? Setting up app track usage sounds like a good idea, like, oh wow, I've used this for an hour today, I really need to stop. But that's not going to stop you using these apps. These apps are designed for you to endlessly scroll. Literally, the design of Instagram removed the see more button at the bottom to make it just automatically load more because they realize why would they ask you do you want to see more they want you to continuously see more your hour has a countdown timer that will appear over the app and let you know how long you've got left for the day and the moment it locks out then you are locked out for good don't be like ashamed of using this type of tech having a little bit of help to uh get off of it definitely use it all right, so you've made it through your day, you've blocked all notifications, and you've limited the use that you've had throughout, and you've been really productive. Great work. Now you're in bed and you're like smashing YouTube on the TikToks, uh, and you're trying to like postpone going to sleep. What are some ways to get control here? The first thing, do not disturb turns on automatically at night. Now this limits all dings and pings from text messages and Facebook Messenger that normally would come through. I can check those in the morning. And if there's a phone call that's really important, if they ring twice, it disables and actually comes through as a loud ringer. That way, if there is an emergency or something, I would still get the loud ring coming through. Second auto on is blue light filter. This turns on at sunset and off at sunrise and allows me to reduce the blue light input as I'm trying to go to bed. Now these are blue light glasses, so I'm gonna cover some other ways to minimize blue light, but this uh, filter auto on, auto off is free and easy and pretty much a no brainer to use. Now I'm someone that forgets stuff all the time. I could write down a new routine or strategy to do something and then within 10 minutes, it's out. I'm like, I'm, I don't remember any of it. So I have calendar reminders for everything. And I have one that goes off 30 minutes before when I intend to go to bed. So at 8.30, it'll ping and say, you've got 30 minutes left of screen time because at 9 p.m. I'm hoping to be starting to go to sleep, to be fall asleep by 9.30. And the only way to really get off your phone when that time comes around, because freaking hell, I do not want to do it. I want to watch more YouTube, is I set a task that I want to do in the morning. That way I'm excited to go to sleep and wake up. It could even just be play a VR game if there's nothing exciting to do. But just having something to do the first thing you get up will make you more excited to put your phone away. Once you put your phone away, put it away from your bed. Putting your phone on charge away from your bed reduces the risk of just reaching over, picking it up, and going back on it later and later. You're going to be too lazy. I'm, not, I'm, I'm too lazy. I'm not getting up out of bed and walking over and picking it up. I'm just like, oh, stuff it, yeah, I'll fall asleep. And this causes an accidental benefit, and that is that when your alarm goes off, you're forced to get out of bed and go get your phone. Once you're up, then you're up. Now my top tip if you have a smartwatch, and I cover this in my review of the Band 5, is setting silent alarms that vibrate on your wrist 
five minutes before your phone goes off. This kind of gives you a Mission Impossible countdown timer to not wake up your spouse or anyone else in the room. No, not perfect, because I will hit snooze on this or like disable it and then fall back asleep and then my alarm goes off. But at least at that point, I'm forced to get up and get going and not sit on my phone in bed. All right, so uh, what do we do now that our like limits that we've set for ourselves are gone out the window? I mean, smash an Xbox, PlayStation, more lobbies than you could believe, and uh, our eyes are strained. We're feeling, we're feeling it. Well, the first thing that you can do, apart from getting some like buying some stuff, is turn the brightness down on your screen. <laughs> That's going to be like a lifesaver to reduce the eye strain, um, and it actually is just like a useful thing throughout day. My monitors are down at like 120 nits. I color calibrate them to make sure that they're a low amount. And that usually tends to be about 30% on the brightness scale. Now, second up, we have some glasses and these guys are blue light glasses, you probably presumed. And I have two pairs that I use. First off, we've got my Quays. Uh, I think it's pronounced K, but as Aussies, we just pronounce what we see. Uh, they feel good. Um, they work well. They're like year to two years old. Um, and I like that the lenses aren't that like super amber tint. My very first pair of blue light glasses were Gunners and these were for gaming. And those ones really tinted and I actually feel like they were worse off for my eyes because I was like straining trying to like see colors. My biggest problem with blue light glasses is that they reflect my eyeballs. I actually see my eyes on the other side. Not everyone gets it. My wife says that she puts these on. She does not get that at all, but my eyes pick it up. And the reason I use these over a filter on my screen is because if I'm color grading or doing color accurate work, sometimes I forget to turn off the night light on my computer. And then I've like graded a picture and I put it out and then I look at it on my phone and I'm like, this looks ugly, what's going on? And I realized I had a filter over my screen. This is a filter, this is no filter, very easy to work with. And my other pair are these ones, these are the Ocu Shields, and I'll set these by the Ocu Shield. they're in the UK, um, and it's apparently made by Autometrist, so they're like certified and they've done tests to verify that they're blue light filtering. These have more glare than the K's in my opinion. My wife once again says she has no issue with glare, so I think it's just my eyes that pick up on this type of stuff. They are so lightweight on my eyes, and I don't even notice that they're on half the time, and that's a big difference for someone that doesn't wear glasses, that my nose is always getting like twingy, and when I wear my K's in past videos, sometimes you see me like squinting my nose because uh, they just feel hard on the face, whereas these are just cushioned, they're just like they're just floating there. As far as tint goes, I think the Oki Shields have a slightly more amber tint than the K's. Maybe that's a benefit to block more blue light. But one thing that's awesome that's not glasses is the screen protector. This is a blue light screen protector by Oculshield. Uh, yeah, it's crazy. You don't have to wear those glasses because you just stuck the glass on the phone. It looks incredible. Like it doesn't even look like you have a screen protector on it and whites look white. That's the main thing. You use my wife's iPhone SE. They don't have a Pixel 5 protector. So when they asked what do I want, I picked SE for review. Now I've color corrected these shots to remove any filters on your screen to get truest colors. We've got this phone as is we've got a medium blue light tint as well as a strong blue light tint. These are the native Apple iOS tint levels. Now it's not for everybody because it's $45 for the screen protector. Yeah, but it feels good and it does the blue light blocking according to their like medical grade tests. I'm just surprised that it works and like the screen looks normal. Like there's no filter on it at all. Now this, this is the last resort. This is a eye massager by Renfo. It's got a voice that talks to you to tell you what it's actually doing. And a pretty loud little motor, but it massages your eyes. But yeah, if my eyes get super strained, I chuck this guy on and it's surprisingly relaxing and good. It's meant to like increase circulation of blood flow around your eye area. But I think it just doubles as good no screen time because you're forced to not be looking at any screen, a TV, a phone, a computer, anything when you've got this on. Now it does also massage your temples. It reaches around there. Now to get around the loud motors which pump up the airbags that are inside, uh, I use in-ear headphones. Those really easily drown out the sound um, and allow music or an audio book to play whilst you've got these on. And it also has heat, which is really good for winter when you've got this like cold fake leather surface against your face. I think I paid like 65 bucks for it. Um, and I was definitely on the fence, but my eyes were killing after playing a lot of VR, like constantly. And this definitely seemed to help with the headaches. And it, it's probably just cause it is a massage and a relaxation thing in general, but like, it's an option. Check it out, all the links are in the description down below for the things that I talked about today. If you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you loved it, sub it down below and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.